So in this next section, we're going to talk about um, some non-ideal transistor behaviors. Um, so these can be a variety of different things. One is high field effects, basically when we get um, too high of an electric field um, going on in the transistor. Uh, another one is channel length modulation. As we start increasing the length of the channel, it will modify the current voltage relationships of the transistors. Then there's threshold vol voltage effects. Um, a few of those are the body effect, um, drain-induced barrier lower lowering, and if we go to short channels, as the channels keep getting smaller uh, with each process technology, um, there become some short channel effects that modify our IV relationships. And then, of course, we have leakage. Um, so we have various forms of leakage. Sub-threshold, we have leakage that goes through the gate oxide. Instead of being a pure capacitor that has no current through it, um, you'll get leakage through the gate. And then junction leakages through our various reverse bias PN junctions. And then finally, we'll go through uh, some process and environmental variations. This is just to refresh your memory um, of the ideal uh, long channel transistor models. Uh, by long channel, I just mean ones that aren't affected by short channel um, effects. So we have three different operating regions. Cutoff region, you have no current through the drain. Linear region, uh, the current IDS is dependent on your VDS voltage and is kind of rises in a sort of linear fashion um, according to this equation, beta times VGS minus VT minus VDS over two times VDS. And then finally, if you're in saturation, it means your drain voltage is high enough um, that it's higher than VGS minus VT. The current flattens off and is no longer dependent on VDS and your drain to source current is beta over two times the value VGS minus VT quantity squared. Um, and that's when VDS is greater than VDSAT, which is VGS minus VT. Now the previous FOIL had the ideal equations for current versus voltage. Now let's look at a actual like 65 nanometer IBM process. So this is still not like our latest um, process technology, but it's starting to see some of the uh, non-ideal effects of the real world. Um, so there's a few different things that you can see here. The, the blue curves are the actual uh, curves of current versus voltage, and the black are what you would predict based on the ideal equations. Um, so let's look at the topmost black and the topmost blue. First of all, you can see that there's um, the, the curve itself is a lot lower than the, the blue one, uh, actual simulated, is a lot lower than the black one, the ideal one. And that is your overall ion is lower because you start hitting some velocity saturation and mobility degradation. So the, your carriers, the mobility is being degraded um, due to, to real life effects and that causes your current to be lower. Second thing is, instead of completely flattening off uh, once you hit uh, saturation, um, you can see that it, it actually still keeps on rising. Um, this is uh, what's due to channel, what's called channel length modulation. Um, as, you, uh, as the channel starts getting pinched off, um, that pinched off region starts taking up more and more um, distance of the channel and so your effective channel length it gets shorter and shorter for the non pinched off region and so that causes an increase um, it, it causes you to not totally flatten off um, the channel length is effectively like changing as you your effective channel length is changing as you increase VDS more and more um, so that causes a slight increase in current um, when it should be flat. And then finally, um, you can see that the distance between the topmost line and the next line down, so the, the 
VGS equals 1 blue line and VGS equals 0.8 blue line, the distance between them should be a square law uh, relationship. And it actually increases less than that square law quadratic equation um, due to some of the velocity saturation and mobility deg degradation. So in addition to some of the uh, non-idealities in the previous slide, um, here we can see that there's also non-idealities in turning the uh, transistor on and off. Um, the on current isn't going to be quite as high as the ideal equations would predict, but also when we go into the cutoff region, so when VGS is less than VT, we've been saying that you have zero current going through the, the device. In reality, if you look at the chart on the lower right, you can see when VGS becomes less than VT, uh, the current is reducing, and when it gets more than VT, the current is increasing, but um, on a log scale, it doesn't just drop right off. It, it does go, um, go down by an order of magnitude as you, or a couple orders of magnitude, as you go between VGS equal VT and zero volts, so when VGS is zero, uh, you're probably hitting about three orders of magnitude difference there, um, maybe four. Um, and in a lot of cases you might think, well, that's quite a big difference, which it is, but when you start getting millions and billions of transistors, um, that current can certainly definitely add up. So uh, the sub-threshold region where your voltage VGS is less than zero does not give you zero current. It's still something that is noticeable enough when you get enough transistors that you have to account for it. So next let's talk a little bit about some of the electric field effects. So you have two main different electric fields in your MOS transistor. So you have the vertical electric field and this vertical electric field is uh, in your channel um, based on your gate to source voltage. So the voltage across your oxide is, is, uh, creates an electric field um, that goes through the oxide and attracts carriers into the channel. Um, and this, for a long channel device, uh, which we're, we're calling our typical device in older processes, uh, the Q channel, the charge in the channel, is proportional to your electric field vertical. Then you also have an, a lateral electric field. This is the based on the voltage from your drain to your source. So that causes charges to move through the channel from the drain to the source. Um, and this is proportional to your voltage uh, divided by the length of the channel. And so this electric field accelerates carriers from the drain to the source, and um, the velocity of uh, the carriers is going to be the mobility of the car carriers times the lateral electric field. So let's do a little bit of a uh, quirky analogy in real world um, to our electric field effects uh, from the previous foil. So this is the coffee cart analogy. Let's say um, you're a tire student and, and you're wor working all night in the lab and you get up at, you know, in the morning, the coffee cart opens, you need coffee. So you're trying to get to the coffee cart as quick as possible and you have to run outside to do that. Um, at the same time, we have a class of freshmen getting out of a large uh, lecture hall and they're kind of in your way um, of the path that you're traveling. So the VDS value, uh, the drain to source, um, how fast you can go, that's how fast you can, you can go from your lab to the coffee cart. So that's your velocity. Um, that's how fast you normally can run, but you're also affected by whatever fatigue you might have from being up all night. Um, whereas the VGS um, electric field is more equivalent to a wind if you had let's say a fairly strong wind blowing you against the building that you're running along um, and slowing you down by basically blowing you against the, the wall. 
Um, so if you have a really high VGS or a really high wind, you're buffeted against the wall and you're going to have degradation to your mobility. Um, on the other hand, at if you have a really high, normally you have a really high run speed, so that's a high VDS, uh, with all of the other students that are in your way, if you go too fast, you're going to wind up running into some of them, falling down, have to get up. So you're going to have to slow down in order to um, basically run between all of the other students in your way. And this is um, analogous to velocity saturation, so a maximum velocity of your carriers. Um, one thing, don't confuse velocity saturation with the saturation region of the transistor. Um, those aren't the same, but um, this is just how do you, you know, think about uh, the two different effects of how the electric fields affect the speed of the carriers in the channel. So here is more uh, some real-world equations on how mobility is degraded um, due to a high vertical electric field. Um, so as we mentioned in the previous foils, if as we add more uh, VGS, um, that electric field will start to reduce our mobility because our carriers will start being um, in effect colliding with the oxide interface that they're running along or running uh, running next to um, through the channel. Um, I'm not going to go into the equations here uh, it's just a way of showing you that as VGS increases since it's in the denominator of the mobility equation here um, it will wind up causing your mobility of your carriers to be degraded in the real world. Um, most of the time we don't uh, go into this too much. We just take our, uh, our we, we wind up curve fitting to our real world devices rather than trying to do really complex equ equations like this and uh, try to program this into our um, spice sims, for example. So here we can see how velocity saturation can uh, occur and um, this again is due to a high lateral electric field so the voltage from your drain to your source as you try to increase that voltage more and more eventually your carrier velocity rolls off um, as your carriers are scattering off of atoms in the silicon lattice um, and impurities that um, we use the dopants that we use in the silicon lattice um, so eventually velocity will reach Vsat um, for electrons that's in the order of uh, 10 to the 7th centimeter per second and holes 8 times 10 to the 6th centimeter per second. Um, again, I'm not really going to go into the models too much, uh, just uh, showing that as you increase, so if you look at the chart on the, the far right, um, as you increase your electric field, the mobility will wind up increasing um, you know, up to a certain point, but then it does start tailing off once you start getting closer to the Vsat uh, velocity. So how does velocity saturation affect your IV characteristics? So again, your ideal transistor on current increases with basically your VDD squared. Uh, in, by contrast, your uh, velocity saturated on current increases just linearly with VDD. In reality, our real transistors are only partially velocity saturated. And so what we can do is we can approx approximate with what's called an alpha power model law. Um, and this is that instead of your IDS being linear or squared, it's to the power of alpha. And this is a value between one and two. And typically you try to determine it empirically based on the process that you're using. Um, for one process, the, the 65 nanometer process that we were showing a couple slides ago, um, that factor is 1.3 instead of one or two. 
So let's see how good this alpha power model does. So what they wind up doing is in cutoff, you say IDS is equal to zero, uh, like our normal ideal. In linear region, um, the alpha power law would say, okay, we'll create a linear um, model where IDS is ID sat times VDS over VD sat. And then in saturation, we just say IDS equals ID sat. So uh, we have two lines that kind of meet each other at where VDS equals VD sat. Um, and below, uh, we can see the uh, curves um, plotted for the alpha power law and the curves plotted for simulated. Uh, the simulated ones use the ID sat and VD sat um, that are in the upper right where we have a factor of alpha instead of um, in, instead of a factor of two. And you can see the curves tend to match pretty well right where VDS equals VGS. Um, so, or when VDS equals VDD, I should say. So when uh, we have the maximum VDS, we match. Uh, we also match uh, reasonably well when we're down pretty low into the linear region. So uh, down at 0.1 volt or less. And in between, it's you know maybe not the greatest uh, match at, for what the transistor is actually doing. Um, but you can see that it matches a whole lot better uh, than if we didn't take this alpha power model into effect. If we looked at the real, uh, like you go back several slides, um, even at the VGS and VDS equal one, we were almost off by a factor of two in the amount of current. So, so we're a lot better than we were, but we're still not kind of a perfect model here. Another non-ideality of real-life transistors is what is called channel length modulation. So what happens is um, we have the reverse bias. So it, the drain of our NMOS device, if it's at a positive voltage and our body of our NMOS device is at ground, um, we have basically a reverse bias PN junction. This reverse bias pre PN junction has a depletion region of carriers. Um, we've kind of gone through that in other classes. Uh, so there's a region between the N and P um, layers that has no carriers in it. The width of this depletion region is called L sub D. So it's the length or whatever um, length or width you can kind of call it. We're, we're going to call it L for length, L sub D for depletion. Um, and that length of that depletion region um, grows larger as you increase the voltage of the drain. So as you get more and more reverse bias PN junction, the depletion region gets larger and larger. When you look at the area under your gate, you have the length of your gate is the distance from the source to the drain. And that N plus source to N plus drain is a certain length, but the length, the effective length that your carriers um, need to travel when we're doing our equations for W over L is that length L minus the depletion region length. So L sub D and that becomes your L effective. So a shorter L effective, if you go through your W over L equations and current, um, shorter L, since it's in the denominator, will give you more current in the device. And then of course, your current IDS will increase as your VDS increases, because VDS causes the L sub D to increase, that means L effective decreases with increasing voltage and IDS increases with increasing VDS. So this is true even when we're in saturation. As you increase your VDS, you will get more current through the device because of this channel length modulation.
So another non-ideality you have with MOS devices is the threshold voltage effects. So VT is your threshold voltage, and that's the gate source voltage at which your channel starts to invert. So our ideal models uh, always assume that VT, your threshold voltage, is a constant. In reality, in the real world, it depends kind of weakly. It's not a strong dependence, but it depends on several other things um, in a variety of ways. So one of those is the body voltage. So keep in mind, we, we typically um, connect up our bulk or body of our transistor to the source voltage, but it's possible that you could connect your body voltage to some other value and that does happen in cer certain cases. So when that happens and you're not connected to the same voltage as your source voltage, um, you'll get a body effect that will actually modify your threshold voltage. Another thing is your drain voltage will actually cause drain induced barrier lowering. So your drain voltage will slightly affect your threshold voltage again. Um, and so that will, will cause your threshold voltage to be changed. And then your channel length could affect your threshold voltage. You can start getting short channel effects um, as the, uh, the length of your channel gets um, shorter than certain uh, parameters. The first of the three threshold voltage effects that I just mentioned is the body effect. So, like I said, the body is a fourth uh, transistor terminal. Usually we don't show it because we just connect it to the source, but um, it's always there. And it, you, know, you have to be aware of what it's doing um, to your transistors in certain cases. So the source to bulk or source to body voltage affects the charge required to cause the channel inversion happening. So increasing the source voltage or decreasing the body voltage relative to the source voltage. So if the, if the body voltage is lower than the source voltage, it will cause your threshold voltage to increase. And the factor of increase is uh, by the equation below. Um, I'm not going to go into the details. This is uh, usually we don't work with this too much um, unless you're uh, doing some really specialized uh, behavior. Um, but that uh, is that equation has a factor in it, um, phi sub s, which is surface potential at threshold. And that's dependent on Vt, which is your Thevenin voltage, times the natural log of Na over Ni, which is your doping and your intrinsic um, doping level Na and your intrinsic carrier concentration of silicon. Um, and so your overall body effect coefficient is that fairly complex equation um, down at the bottom. And again, I'm not going to go into the details. The main thing is to just be aware of the fact that you do have a body effect if you get your bulk voltage um, different than your source voltage, you can either increase or decrease your threshold voltage. So one last comment on the body effect. So if we have a small, relatively small voltage um, between your source and body, uh, we can treat the body effect as kind of a linear effect. Um, and that linear effect is uh, as shown in the equation below, your threshold voltage will equal VT0, which is your ideal threshold voltage with source and bulk connected together, plus a factor that is K times V, your voltage, the voltage difference between your source and body. Um, and so that K factor is a constant, um, and then you multiply that by the slight voltage difference and you'll get a little bit of a linear change to your threshold voltage. And again, I'm not going to go into the details of how that's derived. Uh, you can look up that online or in the book uh, for more details. Mainly, you just want to know that 
the body effect as you change your uh, bulk voltage to something different than the source voltage it will affect your th uh, VT. The second of our threshold effects um, that we mentioned earlier was drain induced barrier lowering. So this is where the electric field from the drain can actually affect the channel. So this is more pronounced obviously in small transistors uh, or small channel length transistors uh, where the drain is closer to the channel. So as we've been reducing our device dimensions um, on a steady pace over the last uh, 40 years or so, um, this is actually becoming something that uh, we care about. So um, this is where the drain of voltage affects VT. So we can model this by saying VT prime equals VT minus eta times VDS. And basically a high drain voltage causes current to increase due to this effect. And again, the, the eta effect is something that you're going to want to model based on actual process technology being used and, and real world measurements to figure out what that is. The last of the uh, threshold voltage effects that I mentioned earlier is the short channel effect. So in all transistors, um, but most especially in small transistors, um, the source and drain depletion regions do extend into the channel. Um, it's just the, in small transistors, um, that extension into the channel can be a much higher percentage of the overall channel length. So it turns out that by extending the source drain re depletion regions into the channel, will impact the amount of charge that's required to actually invert the channel. Um, so not only making the channel shorter, but um, in impacting uh, how the, the effect of VT. So um, this therefore makes VT a function of the channel length. And um, in most or maybe more than majority of processes, this short channel effect will cause VT to increase with L, um, but there are some processes that exhibit a reverse short channel effect in which VT decreases with channel length. Um, so in, in all cases, uh, again, if you want to model this short channel effect, uh, you basically it's hard to come up with a theoretical model for it, um, and you typically wind up uh, developing the process and then you fit your uh, your equation to the curve in order to of the actual device performance in order to model your short channel effect.